Hello, you are welcome to Classic Data Lab, where we provide you with the needed skills to extract insight, add value, and make impact from data. In today's video, we are going to learn what we call string formatting in Python. In our previous tutorial, we dealt with strings, string operators, and string methods. In case you are new to strings, I recommend you watch that previous tutorial. The link can be found in the video description below. Now, let's talk about string formatting. String formatting refers to the process of inserting a custom string in a predefined text. From a layman perspective, I will say string formatting or what we call string interpolation refers to the process of inserting a string in a given message, right? So you insert a given string in a given message or in a, a given text. And that's what we call string formatting. There are several methods of doing that in Python, but the two common methods include positional formatting and string literals, also known as F literals or F strings. I'm going to take them one after the other. Let's start with the positional formatting. All right. So let's say I'm, I'm going to report, I'm going to write a message on sales that has been done by two sales personnel, Kelly and Tony. So my statement is like, Kelly made a sale of 100 of uh, 155,000 Ghana cities, while Tony made a sale, a sale of uh, 215,000 Ghana cities. Great. That's the statement. Or oh, this is the predefined text. Assuming the figures can change at any point in time. And I don't want to come back to this message and be changing the figures. I can decide to assign variables and then or as, I assign some the values to a variable and then fix the variable into the string. So anytime the figure changes automatically when I run the code, it also picks the new figure, right? So you can do that in several ways. And as I mentioned, we want to focus on the positional formatting right now. So I'm going to assign this string here that i've written here to a variable called sales info so you could see that there are some curly brackets here right so th this is the first one this is the second the third and the fourth one the um each curly bracket here serves as a placeholder right that is where you want your strings to appear okay that's where you want your strings to appear so let's uh run this particular script um code Okay, now we want to put in the words, okay, or the strings. Kelly, 155,000. Tony, 215,000, right? So I want these strings to be inserted into the predetermined text over here, right? However, it should insert it based on the positions. That means that the first curly bracket will take the first uh, value here. The second will take... Uh, the second value here and in that order, right? And because we are inserting it based on positions, we call this positional formatting, right? So if I run this particular line, you realize that it prints the same thing, right? But where you see the curly brackets, now you see the, the, the determined strings being appearing over there, right? So that's it for, for that's just a, a quick example of string formatting. When do we use string formatting? Well, it can be used in analysis when you want to automate output of an analysis or a model and you want to automate uh, the printing in a particular way, then string formatting is very, very important, right? And in case you also want to, you are writing an email, maybe in Python, in, with Python in such a way that it picks this, the information and then sends it out in that automated manner, then you need to have a very good understanding of strength formatting. I mean, it's very, very important when it comes to analysis or display of output in analysis, right? So it is a good thing to have at your fingertips. If you don't understand it, you will see other people use it and you'll be confused, right? So it's better you give attention to it and get it once and for all. All right, so let's continue with um, another example. Um, 
this is the same thing it doesn't mean that you, sh you should necessarily assign it to a variable before you can apply the format method you can even write the string and use the dot format method automatically to it and it will work for you so the same thing that uh, i did earlier on you can see it here that i'm not putting it i'm not assigning it to any variable okay i'm not assigned to any variable but it is working for me right great now instead of um matching positions right matching the string based on their positions and the positions of the curly brackets or the placeholders is you can use what you call name placeholder you can give some particular name to the placeholders so or the curly brackets so that it automatically picks the value that should appear there right so for instance i have name equal to coffee amount is equal to twenty-three thousand, right and i want to use string formatting to display a message like Kofi made a sale of 23,000, right? I, 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 I don't want to care much about where uh, the variables appear, whether it can, the name comes first in the format function or the amount comes first. I don't care about that. So what am I going to do? I will specify that, hey, I want the salesperson to appear here and then I want the sales value to also appear in this particular placeholder. So I'll give them names. Okay. Right. So I'll give them names here. When I, in the dot format method, I can specify sales person to call to the name and then sales value to call to the amount. When I run this automatically, it appears. Right. So even if I, let's say I cut this, let's bring the amount first. right control v all right so let's call this one oh sorry the this the name first right and I, I want to bring the sales value first right so the sales value here then i'm going to say 23 oh no it does even a variable called amount so like this and then i run this automatically it still knows that sales value is the amount so it will be able to match it but without uh, the names it will have brought the amount first before coffee so it will be like twenty three thousand made a sale of coffee right that's not what we are expecting so with positional formatting you should you can control where each string or predetermined strings should appear in your text okay if you don't want to just go by positions another way of doing that is also to use what we call the index okay right uh, but before even attack on the index uh, aspect you can use a dictionary to to work on that if you don't have any knowledge about dictionaries don't worry make sure you meet me in the next tutorial where i'm going to talk about uh data structures in python okay yeah so you can use the dictionary as you can see here and you get the same results here right now instead of using uh, names you can also decide to use what you call in the index okay that is i have a name here kwame then the amount is 237 uh then i want to print that kwame made a sale of 23,700. Now, per what you are seeing here, the amount would rather come first before the, before even the name. So if I write the amount in the format and if I bring the amount first, that means that in the text, the amount will come first. So it'll be like 23,700 uh, 23, made a sale of I mean, That's not what you're expecting, right? And you don't also want to keep in mind the position of which one comes first or which one comes last right so if you don't want to worry yourself about how it appears in your format method just um give the index in there that i want the first element to appear here uh yeah, right so let's say want the second element to appear in this particular placeholder and i want the first element and you know first element will be zero in python is zero indexing so we start with zero here but if you run this automatically it will know where each value should be placed or should be inserted into the given string and that is it for you now 
there is one thing about string formatting that you also need to know. Um, we have what we call format specifiers, flows, digits, and scientific notation. There are other ones that you can um, learn from the documentation. Now, um, right now, what are we, we are seeing here are just strings. What about if the value I want it to appear in a particular form, like let's say it's number, and I want it to appear in the form of uh, maybe two decimal place, three decimal place. How do I work around this, or how do I handle this? Okay, that is where format specifiers comes in. So we have F for flows, D for digits, and E for scientific notation. So all that you need to do is that in the placeholder where you want your value to appear, bring a, col a colon, right? And then the specifier follows, right? So for here, I want to write, I believe that 78.567, blah 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 okay of data produced by most companies are not analyzed i want this value this particular value the 78 point something something to appear in the placeholder here right so if i run this code like this you see that it's, it's able to pick all the decimal place and then it has um it's appearing over there let me take off the but you could see say decimal places right let me take off the f away you realize that it puts everything over there into it. So it goes beyond the 33 to 45. Okay. But there's a reason why I'm doing this for you. Just take note of it. Right. Good. So now I don't want to, you know, you are if you are writing an output that contains uh, messages like this, um, percentages right and your percentage is in about six decimal places i mean <laughs> that's a chunk right you definitely want to round it to let's say one decimal place or two decimal places if need be so to do that that's where the specifier comes in so you bring your colon then a dot after that the the number of digits you want or the number of decimals you want plus the f right now i'm bringing the colon here because before the colon i can specify the index of um the string i'm inserting in there right so i will demonstrate that later here if i run this you realize that it has automatically rounded the percentage to what one decimal place because i said one if i say two it will also round into two decimal places as you can see over here right so string formatting allows you to control how um the apple should look like and even control the appearance to some extent right that's one good thing about string formatting okay so let's say we have uh values here we have bill and tips and the total which is the bill plus the tip assuming i want to print the total is this the tip is that and even i want to print the bill in addition but here i'm just dealing with the tip and the total i can say print then i want the tip at uh, the total first so they know the total is zero one i mean the format method you see that the the zero index is the tip and then the one is the, uh, the total because python start counting from zero so zero one because i want total to appear as the first uh in the first pl placeholder i'll bring one indicating that that's what I want to appear over there. I want the total to appear over there. That but that's the position of the total in the format method. And then the tip is the first one, so zero, okay? But I want all of them to be in two decimal places. So I'll bring the index first, then the placeholder. When I run this, I will get it. Total, 29.50. Tip, 5.90, okay? So that's the specifiers for you. All right. Um. And then we also um, have what we call the scientific notations, okay? The scientific notations is uh, where you want the, um, your value to appear in the scientific notation form, right? Not just in it raw values. You can use the E for that. Just bring the colon and then you bring your E. When I, uh, let me take off the percentage here. Um, okay, let me leave it there. Uh, but in real analysis, you wouldn't want to use scientific notations for percentages okay so when you run this you realize that the appearance is different now it's now it's now writing it in the scientific notation form okay so that's string 
formatting for you. Basically, positional formatting. The D allows you to write with comments. For instance, you want you are writing in monetary terms. You want to say three hundred thousand. You definitely want to bring a comma after the three hundred. Okay. In doing that, use the D specifier. Bring a comma before the D, and then it will do that for you, right? So you can see I made a sale, a sales of what, three hundred thousand Ghana cities. Okay, that's it for string uh, formatting or positional formatting. Now let's talk about what we call the string literals, or popularly known as the F strings. Okay, basically it works like that of the positional formatting, but it's quite simple. All that you need to do in formatted string literal is to bring F before the string and then use your placeholders as wished. Okay, so let's say I have variables like first, second, third. These are words that I want them to appear in my predetermined text. So basically, I want to see I hear and I forget, I see and I know, I do and I understand. Okay. So something like that. I can just, in the text, I can change this in at any point in time, right? So I want to just make it an, uh, a format so that automatically, if I change it, it picks it up, okay? So I I'll bring F here, then the string, okay, with the placeholder. So I don't have to bring dot .format anymore. So wherever it sees the first, the variable, that's where it will appear. Whatever it sees second, that's where the second value will appear. Wherever it sees third, that's where the third value will appear. So if I run this, it just move on straight forward. I hear and I forget. I see and I know. I do and I understand. This is what we call F strings or string literals. Specifiers are also allowed in string literals. As you saw earlier on, um, you just need to bring the value and then specify how you want it to appear. So here I want it to be in three decimal places. Okay. So when I run this, it will automatically run it to three decimal places. If I want it to be one, I can just say one and it changes everything for me. Please make sure you practice this. If you want to get access to this particular lab, check in the video description below. The link to this particular lab can be found over there. Make sure you click it. It will take you to Classic Data Lab GitHub repository and you can download this for free. Use it as you want and then make changes to the code and learn from it. All right, so now let's move to um, another example with the str F strings or what you call the string literals. In this case, we have Kelly sales, we have Tony sales, and then we want to use string literals to print them out. But one thing that we want to do is that we want to know the sales that Kelly made, the sales that Tony made, and then the sum, the total, all right? String literals allows you to write expressions in the placeholders and it will automatically execute it for you. So for instance, I want to say Kelly made a sale of 155,000 and Tony made a sale of 235,000, making a total of, you see, Kelly sales plus Tony sales, right? Because it can change, I just want to automate the situation. Even when I change the value, automatically do the calculations for me. When I run this, it automatically sums them up. The same way, if I come here and then I change this to be something like this, Python automatically updates the whole message for me. And that's why it is very good to be used in automated messages. Okay? That's good. So that's it about string uh, literal. They allow you to write expressions in the placeholder and it will execute it for you. Another example can be seen here whereby I'm calculating the average of list of sales, right, with NumPy and it has done it automatically for me. You can even write functions within the uh, placeholders. So the choice is yours, whether you want to go with positional formatting or you want to go with string literals. Mostly people prefer the strings uh, literal because is quite simple and straightforward but the choice is yours thanks for getting to this time with uh, watching this video before we leave this video I want to give you some two takeaways okay I want to say something small about the input function which basically accepts strings as input 
right? So as you can see over here, if you run the input function in Python, it just asks you um, to supply a string as input by default, okay? So let's say, enter your name, and I want to enter a name like Kofi. It accepts it and does it, right? It receives it and, and even displays it for you. So I can assign, I can use the input function to assign a name to a variable called name and then use it in another line of code. Okay, so enter your name. Let's say my name is Rejoice. Okay, Rejoice. And I press it, you realize that Rejoice is a nice name. It, it, it takes the value and then use it for another thing. Okay, good. Why are we talking about input at this time? The reason is that the input function accepts strings. So there are times that you are writing an expression that makes use of numbers or flows. And th in that case, you get an error. So let's take an example. You want to write a code that calculates the BMI of people, right? And the, the BMI is calculated as weight over height square. So taking this, uh, I mean, taking the value of a weight and the height, you expect it to get the BMI, right? You'd be surprised that Python would throw an error at you because whatever number you uh, or value you, you key in, Python will see it as a string by default, right? So let me demonstrate that for you in this particular line of code. Okay, so assuming I have something like this, okay, the height, I want to supply the height, ask me for the height. Let's use one point, let's say nine, okay? Then that's the height. You know, this one, 1 1.9 meters, you would think it is <laughs> a fluid, but Python is seeing it as a string. The same thing for the weight. So let's the weight, let's give it 80 kg, right? And then we run this. You realize that it's throwing an error, a type error for me, simply because I'm trying to divide a string by another string, right? Weight over height. Therefore, I'm going to get an error because strings doesn't allow you to do division. So if you want to input a number and you want Python to accept it as such, if it is an integer that you are inputting, make sure that you wrap the input function in an integer function. It, the same thing with flow. So here we are entering decimal, which is flow. So we rather, we rather like to wrap this input function with the float function. So you just have to make sure you put it inside the float function. And Python will know that um, it is a float and it's not a string. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. Great. So now let me run this and see. It's asking for the weight, uh, for the height. So let's enter 1.9. We move on. Let's enter the weight to be 80 kg. And Python brings out the output. Your height is 1.9 meters and your weight is 80 kilograms. Therefore, your BMI is 22.16. That's superb. Excellent. We combine the string formatting to display or to write the message that we want to get. Okay. So if not the string formatting, we wouldn't be able to get this message in a nice, in a nicer way like this. Okay. So that's one tip that you should have about the input function and strengths. Now, the last thing has to do with what we call the eval, right? There are also times we want to write mathematical expressions, not just numbers, but we want to write mathematical expressions. In that case, don't go and use, don't go and use the float function or the integer function because the integer function doesn't evaluate expressions for you per se. It will just allow you, uh, it will just allow Python to see whatever you're entering as a, as a string, um, as an integer or a float. But if you want the calculation to be done for you, then make sure you wrap the input function in the eval function. That means the evaluate function, right? It will evaluate the expression for you and give a feedback. So for instance, I have a mathematical expression here, like um, 23 modulo 4 raised to the power 30 minus 14, all raised to the power 3. And you want to get the outcome, right? If you run this, the outcome is straightforward. Four, three, eight, nine, seven, six, right? Now, if you want, if you want Python to accept it as input, this expression as input and evaluate it, just make sure that you wrap the input function 
with the evaluate function and it will allow you to write your expressions and give outcome. So now let's put this particular uh, expression that we have here into the input function and let's see what will be the outcome. Control. All right, you get it. So that's the eval function. So these are two tips or takeaways that I want you to get from this video. Thank you for watching this video. In case you have an, um, a newcomer to this channel, I recommend you hit the subscribe button and don't forget to also click on the notification bell so that anytime I upload a new video, you will not miss it. Thank you once again and happy learning. See you in the next video where we will tackle data structures in Python. Bye for now.